hit the live transcript button and uh, welcome to the risk meeting here on uh, May 19th of uh, the year 2022. Let me just drop the minutes link into the chat if you had seen it yet. And I will then share my screen with those minutes in them, I think. And the first, we, we had a long discussion last time about legacy patch support um, that Lucas Gans let, let us through. And it it required a lot of thought on my part. And I, I still have not sure where I land on, on what to do with, with that idea. Um, so I thought perhaps, Sophia, we could lead off with the discussion that we started in Slack around some of the tide lift recommendations about uh, DevOps practitioners choosing open source projects. I I looked at it and I had a hard time navigating it, but I think you have a clearer understanding of of what they're going for there. And maybe it would be helpful to share. Well, I mean, I think you're, <laughs> it was, it's funny. So my background, Sean, was in market research and part of what I did was often work with vendors to create studies like this to showcase how much of a fit their technology <laughs> was or a need for it. So like okay. I see a little bit of remnants in that, but mostly I, I like generally what Tidelift is trying to do with these types of pieces, which is just kind of create more awareness of it. And right. so for me, I, I, I shoved it in the chat because I found it was like, oh, these are things that we're already talking about in risk. It's always nice to see how someone else has approached the same problem. Um, so that yeah. was sort of my thinking and sh and sharing it. So like and one of the things that caught my eye. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is this? <laughs> it is marketing. Yes. They're trying to sell yeah. the tool to people. Um, but on right. slide 12 of that deck that I linked, um, it's key factors when choosing open source packages. They had listed out things like acceptable license, how much activity is happening, how responsive are maintainers, how established is documentation and policies, how welcome is the community, number of disclosed vulnerabilities. So these are oh, these yeah. are metrics that we've discussed is, in relation to my... risk or in other areas of projects. So that was the slide that I was interested in. Oh, that's a weird way to see it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's yeah. why I, um, I realized if I disabled privacy badger, I might be better off. Um, slide 12. That was the one that I was interested in because there was a lot of marketing stuff in here that shouldn't really be. All right, let me widen, yeah. widen that a little bit. If they're using this so. for marketing, it's appropriate. <laughs> yes, they are using it for marketing. Oh, see, I, I disable all those and I don't share my information. I already get all their newsletters. So. <laughs> Uh oh, you are being recorded, Sean. <laughs> Shut up. Know, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> there's there's nothing. <laughs> I I have a particular the email. train wreck continues. <laughs> Carry on. Well, I have an I actually have a separate email that I use for everything like this called lists at goggins dot com. <laughs> well, so now you I look can... at all of their marketing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I mean, you could certainly do worse. All right, carry on. Oh, yeah, I just, I mostly just wanted to raise it because I, again, I, I like seeing how other people approach the same kind of conversations. And this is just an example of that. Um, and so in my head, this is sort of their risk model that they're coaching their customers through in terms of open source package selection. Um, so when we're thinking about things like dependency risk, this is part of that conversation. Um, and so I was interested to see Based on the data they collected, you notice the sample size is 320, which is low for a market research sample, but not insignificant. Um, that number of disclosed vulnerabilities is ranked six in this list uh, versus something like licensing makes sense to have up front. But then the other things in the middle, I think, are a little bit squishier, depending on what's more or less important to you. Mm -hmm. When I look at the list, I, I see I could, I could probably name up the top of my head chaos metrics for all of the things that they itemize. Yeah. Um, I think responsiveness was an interesting one because we, we did talk about that. I think I want to say there's another metric that is also looking at responsiveness um, in one of the other working groups, whereas ours was looking at specifically 
defects responsiveness um, yeah. in terms of how quickly you resolve things that are issues. But I think it's a little bit more risk versus just like general assessment of health. Yeah, evolution in, has pull request and issue responsiveness uh, mm -hmm. as metrics. And I feel like just anecdotally, that's one of the more popular ones that we're tracking in some of our projects, um, especially for say Google working with in open communities, how responsive are we to Googlers versus non-Googlers that can't ping us internally if we're not responding to things. Um, so that's actively yeah, yeah. been a helpful rubric for us to say how, how is our experience differ for people that work in and outside of our company. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, not a huge action item coming out of it. I just wanted to share what I found, something that put, got pushed in my inbox last week. <laughs> So in some ways, I think established policies and documentation, those are kind of covered by, David, I know the name of the thing that we've, that you created has changed. The, um, the, 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 CNC, the it's a, the, the badge, open, right, the badge. It's, it's the open SSF best practices badge. Actually, the, the, okay. the only thing that changed is CII doesn't exist. So it's now open SSF. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I knew I knew it was yeah, a, so, a different name, but the same basic thing. Right, right. I mean, I um, in the course on developing on uh, secure software, we list things to look for, but we're focused more on security. I mean, we mm -hmm. notice you know things like um, you know, do are they active and such, but also things like do they have a badge? You know, is it you know, um. Uh, the, the whole idea of multiple, you know, is it multiple people or an organization, I think covers many grounds because it's both sustainability and also if somebody goes rogue, can somebody else do something or at least notice? Yeah. yeah. Is it observed that rogueness has occurred? Yes. Other than, gee, all my uh, data has been ex exfiltrated. <laughs> my bitcoins right. are gone. <laughs> yeah. That's the in incorrect mode of uh, observation. Um, also something that in the title of construct with responsiveness, um, are you, is this team familiar with their model in terms of the lifters? No. The tide no. lifters, I'm not. I, no. Yeah. I'm, I'm overall familiar. I mean, they're basically, they pay certain software developers who have to sign a contract and then various folks pay into tide lift. So it, it's an, it, I mean, I, I actually think they're interesting. It's a, it's a way to try to get money out to uh, open source developers who might not otherwise. Yeah, no, I, I generally agree with that. And I, I like it. I think the part that it's not concerning to me, I'm just sort of like raises more questions is I met with them when I was at PyCon a couple of weeks ago, I was chatting with someone at tide lift about that they're considering trying to establish more of an SLA with their lifters. Um, mm -hmm. which as a construct, there isn't really SLAs attached to open source communities unless you're working with a managed service over that project, in which case your SLA is with the company, not with the project. And so mm -hmm. this sort of crossing the boundary a little bit here. So something like maintainer responsiveness uh, is something that potentially they could be directly incentivizing as tide lift with their right. lifters of projects that are within their purview. Right. I mean... I have no, I have seen no moral objection to a reasonable contract. I will pay you X, you guarantee Y, as long as all parties are aware of the exchange, you know, both parties are understanding of the exchange for, you know, of uh, what, dollars for services <laughs> seems perfectly reasonable. <laughs> uh, but it is, it is different. That's okay. Difference. Okay. I, I would definitely worry about the, is this, you know, do the people agreeing to it actually understand it? Are these reasonable requirements? Um, at some point we have to let adults be adults, but. <laughs> well, when I, hear when I hear service level agreement, I mean, I think that's why companies who, who create commercial versions of open source operating systems, for example, are paid a fair premium for the services they provide because they have entire organizations that and that are that are able to ensure that service level agreement i i have a hard time trusting that any individual will always be able to fulfill a service level agreement 
always is hard to be honest that's even true for organizations if yeah you, give, you know it, it, i mean red hat's probably one of the more capable um op, you know open source plays but if you gave it something where you know oh my gosh you know you have to rewrite the kernel um i mean <laughs> there's a limit to what anyone can do uh but right. that, that really comes back to my concern about you know, does the person who's agreeing to the SLA actually understand what they're agreeing to? I mean, I could I could agree to an SLA of two weeks for certain things, especially if there were exceptions for a grave illness or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I would have to coordinate with folks, but I, how's I don't I haven't seen the specific text of their agreements. I know they exist, but I can imagine such an agreement would be possible. I just you know they would have to figure that out. Yeah, so that was actually something that I've been meaning to just reach out to them and say, hey, tell me about what you do, because we're we're curious if this model is actually working. But I'm also, again, I'm always curious from a metrics perspective, what behavior are you incentivizing by doing this? Um, and could, could it have other ramifications to the project? Like something I would think of immediately is if you're getting paid to ensure that the product is up and running, then are you spending as much time as you should be on things like documentation and onboarding of new individuals to the project? So when you decide to step away, I don't like. I don't. I don't know. Like, it's just a question of a what, of, what are they incentivizing them to do. A lot of projects don't have, aren't single person anyway. I mean, yes, a lot are, but a lot of the ones that they're going to focus in probably have more people. So it's a lot easier for a group to agree on that. And now you've got to get agreements between the people in the group to manage it. But uh, I mean, that's that's actually how organizations work too. So <laughs> companies mm -hmm. work too. So I mean, these, these are. These are painful and awkward and normal problems. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they're public, actually, Sophia. I mean, it would be hard. I mean, you if they had agreement with a single developer, um, it would be easy to keep it secret. But my guess is that they want to work with a whole bunch. And uh, as Benjamin Franklin observed, uh, two can keep a secret if one is dead. So the more people... <laughs> Benjamin Franklin was a dark person he, was, you know, you know, he had a way with phrases um you know so basically um you know it gets really really hard to keep a secret the more people have to keep the secret so my guess is that it's not worth it to them to try to keep that secret mm -hmm. and it's probably not worth it to try to tweak it for every single org because uh their the scalability gets awkward then yeah it seems like they have their lifter agreement is public it's just yeah. the SLA piece isn't, that wasn't officially offered yet. I know that was something they were discussing. Ah. Well, to me at an event. So I'm guessing they're talking about it with their lifters too. Oh, <laughs> if, okay. If I'm, so so yeah. the, the SLA is, they don't have any SLAs right now? I'm surprised by that. Well, they probably do as Tide Lift, a company, but well, in terms of what they're, they're asking the from the lifters. On. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't, if I were offering an SLA, and I, I extremely had extreme dependence on some supply to do that, I would turn around and first make sure I had an agreement with my suppliers. Uh, that would be true if it was water, car, or software. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, uh, do, I'll do more reading. We can move on just because I want to make sure we, I don't want to hamstring the whole conversation on this. It was just something interesting that I stumbled upon. Sure. Thank you. Uh, there are some metric updates. Uh, we, we have some tasks possibly to update our metrics. I don't know if we have gotten our feedback yet. We did not get it at the la as of the last time. And we still don't have it. I don't know who owns risk as a review, but we have not been reviewed yet. So um, as most of you know, we're going through older metrics and ensuring that they're up to date, current, look nice, are correct. I, I think absent uh, Lucas being here, I don't really want to engage in the um, legacy patch support um, discussion because I was, I, I, unless Sophia, you think otherwise, I think, I think there was just a lot of context and I think you know, kind of where I ended up landing at the end of the last discussion is we may uh, already cover much of the concern in that particular metric in other places. 
Yeah, I kind of saw it as a, like an extrapolation of metrics that we already have in terms of just supportability, whether or not someone is actively supporting something or not. Um, his case was particularly on versioning. So like supporting older versions right. and patches and older versions. And, but then we kind of, for those that weren't there, we kind of got stuck in some of the details of break, breaking changes in versions. But that's something that I don't know if we can trust the, as the single whole digit number increases in a version, how do we know whether or not they are breaking versions or not in terms of backwards right. compatibility? And so sort of the question was for a lot of legacy systems that depend on older versions, they're also depending on constant patching of those older versions and essentially assessing just that portion of things versus overall patching support across all versions of product or project rather. So I don't, I don't know if it made sense to have its own metric versus we, if it's something that he thinks is really important to discuss, perhaps it's something where we describe how basically to use the metrics we already have to suffice for this case. Yeah, and I think that's, that's I, I kind of landed in the same place that I think we have metrics that can sufficiently get to the, to answer the questions that are, that he presented last time. And he, since he's not here, maybe maybe table that my my next question would be what are the components of risk in open source software and and it's a very significant topic right now that chaos is well suited to help address compared to the ossf or the other organizations so it's kind of a big question but where where can chaos's risk working group prove to be most useful in the open source ecosystem is, is the continued definition of metrics the place? Are the development of metrics models or software components the place? I, I, I ask, I throw it to the crowd. And we have a nice crowd here. That, that was a long question. Yes, um, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, I yeah, babble. Yeah, professor, professor, could you please ask a shorter question? Sure. Speak, speaking as one yeah. who's a professor and sometimes also asks ridiculously long questions. <laughs> oh, you're going to How about that me. one? Where can the risk bank add the Where? most value to? Okay. Like what should it's a, it's another way of asking what should we work on next, but then I start to make the question longer. Right. I mean, presumably it's, do, you know, doing metrics since that's what, creating metrics since that's what chaos does. Um, and implementing them. Don't forget the implementing here in the standard way. Yeah, and that's, that's. You know, Tertia and so forth. I, I and, and I'm biased, so I'm glad that you said that, Kate, and I didn't because my my sense is making the the metrics that we do have related to risk visible and uh, mm -hmm. part of the community discussion and, and the awareness of of people who work within chaos and within this working group and beyond uh, making those more visible i think maybe one one really important uh, get there. piece of work that we can accomplish Mm -hmm. All right, I have a crazy idea. It'll take me a moment. We can keep talking about some other things, but if, if you want to pursue the broader question, hey, what would be useful? Um, in the fundamentals course on how to develop uh, software, um, it includes information on how to evaluate open source software that you're thinking about adding as a dependency. Now it's not giving metrics, it's just asking the broader, but you would like metrics to support those questions. So do you have a I, link, David? Because I, I do. I, I don't do, know what you're talking about. Excellent. We <laughs> yeah, will, sounds I interesting. Will, I will solve that problem, but we, here, <laughs> the problem is I don't have the note open. So I'm gonna have to run first to my calendar to find this doc that we're all viewing and then go oh, over I can, to, um, you can I can add that to the, it is, it is, should be in the chat, but let me add it no, again. Maybe. I think because you I added it before he joined, so he doesn't see it. Uh, exactly. Sorry. It, there you go. I just added it. 
All right. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add actually two links. Uh, well, I, well, how's this? I'll first add the actual link to the materials. So boo, boo, boo. give me just a second. Um, it's actually, you'll be shocked to know the, the course materials are managed on GitHub. And if you do... <laughs> Uh, and are these Linux Foundation course materials? When you, yes. you didn't yeah. say the course materials that. <laughs> yep, okay. yep. Linux Foundation yeah. courses. Linux materials. It's something I should, I should ping you about and see what's happening there too on that one too, Sean. There you go. <laughs> yeah. okay. right. I, so I have an email in my inbox. Okay. Well, one approach might be to a look at the fundamentals course material here. I'm sorry, I, I can only, uh, okay. Now what you're seeing here is the, um, is an entire course just presented as text as a big markdown file. Okay. Now within that, there is, should I open that or just let it be? Hey, you, well, you can open it up, but I, let me go find the section that we care about because I mean, it's an entire course takes about, you know, that's a giant years. markdown file. Yes, it is, because it's about 16 hours worth of course. So let's see here. So let me pop to the specific section that we actually care about. Uh, something about evaluating open or evaluation. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I may actually have to find the section here. Anyway, what I'm thinking of is, you know, why don't we talk about something else while I go find the ref? But what I'm saying is, why don't we, in a moment, once I find the, the section of the document, I will pull out just that part, maybe I can even copy and paste it in, and then we can talk about how metrics might be able to support those things. Does that sound like a, at least a reasonable area of discussion? Yeah, yeah. Okay, give me, give me a second, because I wasn't prepared to do this. So I'm doing this, uh, I'm doing this as quick as I can. Uh, somebody stall for me, please. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm... thinking about the question again. John's big question. Yeah, um, it, it's just, you know, I, I think, so I, 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 I've, I always recognize that I'm biased towards building things and that, that, that helps me understand what the metric is. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like that's one one important part. The other part that David, I think, is describing for us are criteria that have been established in a Linux Foundation course that can be used as a, a way of map either mapping concepts to existing metrics or uh, providing a, a list of perhaps higher priority metrics that the risk working group could focus on. Or quite frankly, I think we can put suggestions to improve the course from the work we're doing here. Right. Yeah, okay. I, so I it certainly would suggest reflexive. Yeah. You, you, I, I, yes. Improvements can go all directions. I mean, if it turns out right. that there's something, I mean, there's an endless number of things you could review. So I would say if it's not very important, let no. But yeah, if it's important and it's not in there, let's fix the, the course. Uh, let's see here. We actually, there's actually another one too. Ah. Now, th this one's even newer. Um, oh, ha. And it, it steals directly from the course. So, uh, all right. So, basically, the best practices working group is taking, um, you know, note that, that is, is, is actually taking that material and trying to turn it into a short document. And I can pull up its version here. And the cool thing about that one is that's a Google Doc. So how is it? I mean, there's a little bit of a markdown and mess there, but um, All right, you know what, actually, for, for this, purposes of the moment, why don't we just go to the, even though it's kind of messy, because this is an early draft draft stuff, 
why don't we go to this document by the best practices working group um and what what i'll say about this document just looking at it quickly is it yeah. it sounds like a process focused checklist for evaluating risk associated with open source software That's in your right. stack that That's is right. sort of a it's a it's a elaboration of how you might go about applying metrics it's a manual to metric utilization and risk perhaps I, 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 now, the last statement i think is exactly wrong metrics oh. should be supporting a decision right whether or not there's a metric you want evidence e metrics are only one kind of evidence there are many other kinds what you want is a decision if you have a metric and it doesn't support a decision i don't care i can count the number of e's in my dictionary it's a metric don't care <laughs> okay so the problem of course is that we've got many many decisions that right now have to be supported purely by manual approaches because we don't have good automated metrics so the more we can figure out what are you trying to measure and find a metric for it the better everyone's life's going to be so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, so i'm pushing back a little bit but hopefully what i'm pushing back and makes sense well tell me if the way that i typed it up in the notes makes sense oh well Measures to support decisions. Yeah, it's not really so much a process oriented. It's just a checklist. Yeah, I would say a process. I, the document provides a checklist for, and it's not applying metrics for helping to make decisions. Some of them have metrics. Some don't. It would be helpful right. if more of them did. But it, you know, the first one should it be added at all. I don't think we'll have a metric. You know, last commit date is an incredibly simple metric. By the way, it turns out to be really useful. <laughs> yeah. Is it easy to use securely? That's hard to measure. Maybe that's beyond the, the ability for us to make a decision on. Is there is evidence? The okay. I'm sorry? Is this the document I should be looking at, David? Um, yeah. I mean, it's messy okay. because it's an early draft, but I think, you know, it, it, it is... It's simple and probably for our purposes, it's a Google Doc, so it's easy to copy and paste into our notes. So I'll, I would just put a link. I wouldn't copy and paste okay. the whole document. Well, but, but no, but the thing is, if there's a snippet here, you want to copy. Right. I don't think I have the time to process it to decide what would be the right snippet. Okay, well, that, that's fine. So let's kind of walk through. So let's walk through this list right now. You know, acknowledging that hey, you know, they basically did the automated assessment. Now check the package rating on depths.dev. Uh, you know, um, proceed to manual view. That doesn't really add any value, much value there. I mean, could have just been in one line. Look at there. Get the scorecard value. All right, should it be added at all. I don't see how you can do that with the simple metric. Um, believe it or not last commit well, date so should it be added at all is kind of a heuristic decision by the project team right it's um, do we actually sure need this do you need function this? do we need this functionality or and more importantly maybe the costs of adding it aren't worth it where we have five other libraries that provide the same other same functionality exactly. already we already in have our project. It. You know, we, I, I can do this in one line myself. Why am I depending on an unknown developer uh, who might insert malicious code later? You know, what, what, what's, you know, is there a plus here? <laughs> okay. Right. Um, uh, last commit date. That is a ridiculously simple measure. It's not crazy. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Let's see here. Next one is it easy to use securely. That's hard. Uh, to measure in an automated way. I agree. Uh -huh, me too. I don't know about this. This is a reason to avoid using C and C++ to implement new software. Mm. What? But that's... I, I, I'm, 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 like I say, I, I'm, I, that, that's inserting a judgment without backing in my mind here. Uh, yeah, do you I, I don't see how the language choice is with the secure use issue. Oh, no it, 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 70% of the vulnerabilities in Microsoft and in Chrome are from memory safety. That can't oh, oh, happen so, in any so, other So that's language. fine, but you can have problems with memory safety in other languages. No, too. no, 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 no. That's the point. 
it's more it's it's C C plus plus assembly and certain languages if you disable the safeties which is usually recommended for only very you know, you you disable the safeties for five or six lines of code out of your five hundred thousand line program. That's so the point. I, the only thing I would uh, suggest around that is that. I don't know how old Chrome is, but I know that a lot of Microsoft's code base is very old, and the so and a contemporary sure piece of so yeah, yeah. A contemporary sure piece of software think. following good practices. I mean, you write things in C and C plus plus because you need them to perform quickly, right? So I worry that like this is it seems like a very blanket statement that yeah. Doesn't quite cover. Well, doesn't quite. It's, it's, it's deleted, yeah. but but uh, you know, I, I will it observe is... that there are other languages, particularly Rust and Ada and Fortran, which run just as fast as C and C plus plus. And for a lot of folks, it doesn't matter that much, and Go and Java are fine. But <laughs> right, but right. I, I'm I'm just like I say, the use securely mm -hmm. is. That is to me. To me, that criteria there is ambiguous, and then linking it to the language like that is a step too far. Is is, is quite okay. frankly right. here's the pro here's the problem. Value. There is incredible evidence for this. When yeah, but so you tell me that the Linux kernel is insecure? Yeah, uh, uh, they are working. They are moving towards Rust. I know, but like I say, oh. today at C and C plus plus, it's the most used um, software. Most of the Linux kernel vulnerabilities are because of C and C plus plus. It's the vast majority, just like everybody else who uses C and C++. And how much That's, of the kernel is written in C and C++? Currently all of it. But I think, I think the so challenge why right would, is, the, is the Where phrase, else would they come from? Oh, 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 okay, I think you're missing the point. When you have I'll, choices, mm -hmm. here's one in C, here's one in, in some other language. The C one's more risky because you're going to have, um, you know, uh, almost triple the number of vulnerabilities in on average, because most vulnerabilities are caused by weaknesses in those languages. Now, if you don't have a choice, it does the, your decision's clear, right? <laughs> it's a I'm trying to figure out which, and it's not that seems evil. I've written a ton of C myself. Okay, it's just you're you're it's a it's a risk issue. But by, by the way, why are we not? It's just that the term use securely. Yeah, we, we, it, it doesn't secure. define what secure usage is. Ah, that's actually yeah. in, this is all part of a larger uh, section. So, well, and the, um, the, the, so, by the way, what happened the, to, what, that, that was deleted in your original. I'm curious how that, the, the C and C plus plus one wasn't actually deleted in the original. So, uh, what, <laughs> or at least suggested deleted. Mm. So, I mean, okay. the other, the dirty little secret, though, is that a lot of, for example, machine learning libraries are written in C, C++, and Fortran, and then yes, wrapped in the Python. Fortran, that's right. <laughs> By the way, the Fortran ones are fine. The Fortran ones are fine. <laughs> it's because um, engineers built Fortran, but maybe not so much. Yeah. I, I think it also depends on the variant of Fortran and whether or not pointers are extension. And there's variants of Fortran where you have, which have pointers. We start to get in the same set of problems. Uh, that's that's true, and you can ha create weird common blocks in in Fortran. But there, mm -hmm. but um, typically when you're using Fortran, you're not using one of those odd variants. Yeah, you're right. There are some some uh, you know, if you use a modern Fortran and add the you add the pointer stuff. But uh, I I'm, I'm sure it's somewhere. I don't think that's a usual case. But the the, the problem isn't just pointers; it's the safety of them. Anyway. Um, uh, you know, my, my point earlier was review the last, what happened with the review of the last commit? I, I don't have edit access to this document, so I oh. did not touch it. I just, I took the link out of the chat. Is there a different link in the meeting uh, notes that I should strange. attend to. What, what, uh, let me repost the, the, cause the, the, what, what's confusing to me is what you're seeing is not what I'm seeing. And let me just repost the link. So, no, that's the same link. It, it, Weird. So I, um, so you're not, does, yeah, do a reload. Okay. I had no idea. Google Docs doesn't show 
the edits on this document. Hang on, let me do a hard refresh and see if no. Okay. All right. So you're seeing uh, an older version of this. All right. I had there is a I had there no is idea a, that that happened. Okay. That, no, well, there there is a periodic that. bug I've noticed in Google Docs lately where updates don't seem to appear for everyone, and I. Oh. It's only a very recent, like the last month or two, that I've I've seen phenomena like this. Okay. So. All right. Review the last cop commit and its date. Number one. I mean, the obvious mm -hmm. metric is measure the date. If you don't want to measure language, that's fine. Let's move on to number four. I think we're. I don't want to get stuck on that. What I I, I just want to uh, look through this list and see if there are potential metrics that would support these kinds of questions. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you know, number four is: Is there evidence that the developers work to make it secure? We already have the best practices badge, um, the scorecard. That's a different group. So uh, let's see here. Uh, use of tools, um, an assurance case. Um, does it have a secure review? Yeah, some of these are probably either you know, they already exist or it's a little tricky. Um, ah, are there instructions on how to report vulnerabilities? You might be able to measure that actually. There are various heuristics you could use to to do that. So that would be one that would be. So, for example, in that case, is are GitHub issues sufficient, or do they need to be reported to one of those CVE databases? Neither. Okay. Uh, that, oh. So so let let let's let's immediately kill that. GitHub issues can be used. Do you know the problem with GitHub issues with a typical well, open source project? That they are not attended to or distinguished from or they triaged are, well they're, they're not, not triaged, triaged yeah. often but that's the that's that's a minor problem the bigger problem is they're totally public most right security you wouldn't researchers want to... don't want to post them publicly so until most they're solved projects don't want them, until they're solved now there are projects which actually have a policy of you just post it publicly tell the world it's fine you know they they do full disclosure on themselves um, I would not run a project that way, but if people do, then using a GitHub um, issue is fine. But that means you have to tell the world it's okay to report a security. So what you're looking for is there are various indicators in various documents that say, here's how to report a, a security vulnerability. Is there a best practice like with the Linux Foundation or other foundations for reporting security vulnerabilities? Yeah, uh, so the CVE, uh, the CNAs have a process, and I think trying to steer towards um, following what the, um, which is having an email ID at the minimum that is yeah. going to a secure group of people. And so I would basically take this from the CNA best practices, and we're trying to, I'm trying to align up with them where I can. I don't know if anyone in OpenSSF is trying to create yet something different, but. Um, yeah. The, <laughs> the, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. There isn't a group within OpenSSF called the Vulnerability Disclosures Working Group, uh, which has some practices that they suggest for reporting. Um, I'm not sure that's to the point where you can easily measure it, but that may, maybe that's the thing to do is make ch changes in what they say so that it's easier mm -hmm. to do. But they do have like a template for if you're an open source project, slap this sucker in. Uh, and, and Kate's right. Usually the way is you tell people, if you find a security vulnerability, you send an email to this address. Um, if you're a large organization, it's probably secure or security at blah, 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 blah. And if you're an individual, it's probably just your personal email address, uh, which is not awesome, but you know, it works. And, you know, presuming your software is doesn't have a vulnerability reported several a day or something like that. It's a, it's a, hopefully a rare occurrence. Okay. So generally, what and, you're going to do is look in README or security.md's for email addresses to report to. So it it, it seems to me that um, I requested edit access or at least comment access on this, but I see I'm seeing. I think you said this already, David, but. There's cases where we could point to existing chaos metrics that would right. answer these can, questions. Right. And, and, and there's other cases where, 
<laughs> and then the other side, right, is there are places where we don't have metrics and we would either, I think we could either cross reference, for example, to something like the OSF scorecard or um, put, put a metric that we don't think another working group inside the foundation is going to address on, onto our, um, the word bucket list came to mind, but that's not the right word. <laughs> um, the, you know, to-do list I think is better. Yeah, and and number six, I don't know. Do we? I've forgotten. If, uh, you know, it's basically the number of days since they somebody's done anything. These, yeah, these are some of our most basic evolution metrics. Give us yeah. this picture. Yeah, like some of the first metrics we built. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Does it have significant use? I don't think we have any use uh, metrics, do we? They're they're very difficult to get at. They are well for open source um, anyway. They are. Yeah. You can get you can get A depends on B, but if nobody uses A either, it doesn't help you. <laughs> right. Yeah. So like, I mean, how's this? If you can skin that cat, um, there's a whole lot of people who want to uh, hear about it. <laughs> I, I, oh, and I, and and Kate's already going to be excited because number eight is about software licensing. Uh, because it does turn out that licensing matters. Uh, Kate, Kate you, you, you might already know that. <laughs> Preaching to the okay. choir, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. And, and when it comes to, one of those, yeah. we all know this one. Yeah. This yeah. Yeah. One of our risk yeah. Going, going back to significant use, the, the there are proxies like, uh, mm -hmm. for example, forks. I, I think depending on the category of software, the creation of issues are proxies for whether or not it's used. Um, ah, so there are, that's there are, fair. There are I, proxies. I, I'm actually not convinced about the forks, but I, uh, cause there's, you know, it depends on how the project works and not everybody's on right. GitHub. But, but requests, yeah, if, yeah. If, if people make issues, that doesn't mean it's maintained, but it probably means it's used. That's fair. So they're yeah they're proxies, but there's and of yeah, course they're not there the are, same thing. No, and there and there are projects that track downloads, and if you own or have rights on a project, you can see the number of clones, mm -hmm. um, and if it's distributed, of course, through package manage. So there are different ways to get at it, but there's no one. There's not a consistent way. Yeah, and you always have these weird ones, like the uh, the number one, I believe. Um, is it the MySQL database connector? It's one of the database connectors. I think it's MySQL within JavaScript. Um, Sounds like it. Sounds yeah, they uh, they disa they disable GitHub issues. I don't know how you're supposed to report problems. They don't want to hear about them. <laughs> they don't want to hear about them. You you can you can file GitHub issues if you are already a maintainer of the project. I think the guy is just so busy and he doesn't want to deal with it anymore. So, and finally, so the, you know, evaluations, which really comes down to you know doing either manual or uh, this. Yeah, this, these are this is like basically as a, a person deciding, making the decision. I'm going through my own heuristic evaluation, looking at some of these metrics and and making a final judgment. Well, for the last one, it's not just it's not metrics. It's really look at the code, right? You know, if you, you know, it, it, when you want to know what some code does, actually looking at the code is the best way to answer that question. <laughs> so it's, all others so the, are second best. So maybe one of the reasons I referred to this as a process uh, checklist or mm -hmm. a process oriented checklist at the beginning uh -huh. is because if I don't have good answers above number nine, I'm not going to bother with number nine. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, there, in that sense, yes, I would agree with you. I mean, you could obviously. Oh, but, Sean J Goggins wants to share a document. I guess I'll let him. <laughs> if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm paid by the hour for doing the evaluation, I guess I would go through that if the answers to one through eight were terrible. But um... yeah, but no, I think that. But but you know what? I think that's not only is that right. I think that's a good thing. You know, don't wait. Yeah. If it's obviously terrible, don't waste your time. Um, if it's looking, if you're unsure, but it's plausible, you know, there's your next step. But, uh, okay, yeah, so from that sense, yes, I'd agree with you. 
and but more broadly so you you asked hey what could this group do and i came up with a list of questions which would be awesome to have more more and better metrics for so what but i think i i will take an action item to to either make a copy of this or make is it better to make a copy of this or to make comment i don't want to create a problem okay for the Th people actually working is, on this, this group, yeah this group is actually trying to make a much shorter one page guide out of this okay so, so perhaps make a copy and then comment on that and if you if you we want can the, revisit the original um this is yeah strange, of course though. yeah your version your version still doesn't have the changes i can you do a reload yeah i'm gonna do it right now it could very well be that no i'm seeing something different ah, now. now it's different yeah all righty it it may have been that I had read only access and so I wasn't seeing the edits that I, hadn't been I, accepted yet. I, I would have accepted oh. expected those to be seen though, even if it's read only. But if I would not, as okay, well. I learned something. All right, uh, you know what? I learned if, if that's the situation, I now learned something. It, so, it my apologies, be... I didn't I didn't understand that that I, I did not know this work about Google Docs. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess that really the fastest way to check it is just to log in as a different me and see if I see it. Yeah, log, logging in as a different Google account, I don't see the edits any longer. Weird. All right. So the good. Google account that you gave me edit access on allows me to see the, the edits. Okay, all right. So we, we've guess... learned something about Google, and we I will have... go back. I'll go back to the minutes. And, all right, uh, so, so I think from My action is... item is... Go through this document yeah. to and identify can... metrics and potential metrics. Right, and at the very least, we've identified things like the last time a commit or you know update or maybe a response more generally was made. I vaguely think we've got that already, but maybe not. Um... All right. You know, the badge, the scorecards, although, you know, the, the badge already exists. You can add open SSF scorecards, although I'm not sure that, you know, I mean, that's up to the chaos what they want to do. Um, Augur, Augur gathers the data. The question okay. is, I, I, I can't remember if we've created a metric um, yeah. for it off the top of my head. And since we're out of time, I'll just take my action item and thank you all for a very productive risk working group discussion. <laughs> okay. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody. Right. Uh, thanks, Kate. Thanks, David. Thanks, Renisha. See you all later. Yeah. All right.